and in this video we're going to be looking on pages Excel 38 and 39 in which we're going to copy formulas with absolute cell references. Now when you're copying formulas you may want one or more cell references in the formula to remain unchanged in relation to the formula. In such an instance you need to apply an absolute cell reference before copying the formula to preserve the specific cell address when the formula is copied. You create an absolute reference by placing a dollar sign before the column letter and row number to, uh, of the address. Or you can just hit your F4 key as well. So let's take a look at step one and we'll go through uh, this and kind of show you how this is done. In step one it tells us that we want to click on cell G1. And on here we want to type in the label change. Once we type that change, we want to hit enter. Then underneath the change in cell G2, we want to type in 1.1, and then we're going to press enter. Now you, uh, you store the increase factor, and that's what this is, that 1.1, that will be used for a what-if analysis uh, on there. Now the value 1.1 can be used to calculate a 10% increase. And of course, once again, as we said, anything you multiply by 1.1 is going to return an amount that is 110% of the original amount. So this is going to pull up some additional information, and this is just performing a what-if analysis. So what if we had a 10% change? Because we've already figured up a 20% rise and a 30% rise, but what about a 10%? So if we take a look in step 3, it tells us we're going to go over here to cell H3 we're going to type in what if. So what if this happened? And we're going to press our enter key. In step four it tells us that first of all we want to type in our equal because that's our formula prefix and then we want to click cell F4. So what if this was increased up by 10 percent? So if we click cell F4 then multiplication, and then we want to click on cell G2. Once we have that, we click on our enter key, and of course that gives us a 10% increase uh, on there, and that's the result that you should have, the 28,250.1, and this value represents the total annual expenses for Australia if there's a 10% increase. Now of course we want to perform a what-if analysis for all the tour countries. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the, our fill handle now and we're going to drag this from cell H4 down to H11. Uh-oh. We notice that the resulting values now in H5 to H11 are all zeros, which is not the results that we wanted because a 10% increase in 16,327.96 is not zero. And that is where you need to make sure before you copy or move a formula, you always need to check to see if you need an absolute cell reference. Because let's take a look here. Because in this case, they're all zeros because we did need a, um, or because we used a relative cell rep or a, a relative cell address in cell H4. And when we copied it, it used relative cell addressing. We needed an absolute cell reference that's on here. So notice that here, if we clicked on this, it shows us that it's F4 times G2. The formula right below that shows us F5 times G3. So notice that it's just kind of locking that reference is to wherever it's at in the formula. And because there's nothing in G3, the result is zero, which is an error. So we need to make sure that in this formula, we're always going to point back to the cell G2. Now we could go through there and we can type in G2 for all these, but yeah, that's a complete waste of our time. What we need to do is, is that we need to modify this first formula and then recopy it. So that's what we're going to do uh, on there. And that way, so uh, we need to use this absolute cell reference in this formula to keep the formula from adjusting itself automatically. And so it always points to G2. So to do this, we need to uh, look at step six. And of course it tells us we need to go back up to cell H4 because that's our originating formula that we had. And it tells us that we need to press F2. Now F2, it puts us in edit mode. Once we have that, 
our cursor should be in the G2 uh, cell. And if we press our F4 key, notice that dollar signs now appear. Uh, of course, when the F2 is pressed, the range finder color codes the cells. Uh, it outlines the arguments of the equation, uh, as you see in this case, blue and red. And of course, the insertion point appears next to the G2 in the cell reference in cell H4. When you press the F4 key, as we did, the dollar signs are inserted in the cell G2 cell reference, which makes it an absolute cell reference. Now, of course, when changing a cell reference to an absolute reference, make sure the reference is selected or the insertion point is next to it before pressing cell F4. If you made a mistake, just cycle through it. If I press cell F4 again, notice that it's going to cycle through that to the different cell references. This is the one that we want right here with dollar sign $G and dollar sign $2. Once we have that, we want to press our enter button here. And of course, notice that didn't change this value whatsoever because that formula was already correct. However, in this case, if we use our fill handle and we fill this back down to cell H11, which is step 7, we drag the fill handle from cell H4 to cell H11. And now, because the formula correctly contains an absolute cell reference, the correct values for a 10% increase appear in the cells H4 to H11. And of course, we can take a look at the different cells and we can see, ooh, well, yeah, G2 doesn't change at all because they have the dollar signs in front of them. So that is an important feature. Now, of course, once again, you may say, well, I'll just type in G2. Well, feel free to do that, but it's a waste of your time. Um, use the absolute cell reference and copy down the formula. Now you may say as well, well, why do I even need to bother with this? Why can't I just type in the 1.1? So instead of, I can just put F4 times 1.1. Well, what if we want to go through and see what a 20% increase looks like? If we were going to do that, you would have to change all these different formulas. Or you'd have to change this one and use the fill handle. Still more work than what we want to do. If we take a look on step 8, it tells us to click back on cell G2. Then we're going to type in 1.2 and then click on our enter button and then watch what happens. All the formulas all at once change to reflect the 20% increase. So notice that using these references, using the formulas, using the functions is a very quick way of changing things. Because then if your manager told you hey, make this change, let me see what happens here. You could do this and it quickly adjusts that for you and you don't have to spend more time going through and having to perform all these calculations all over again. Now, go ahead and make sure that you save your work. And if you take a quick look on page Excel 39, it talks about using the fill handle for sequential text or values. And of course, often you need to fill cells with sequential text for months of the year, days of the week, years or text plus a number, for example, quarter one or quarter two. And of course, you may, for an example, you may want to create a worksheet that calculates data for every month of the year. Using the fill handle, you can quickly and easily create labels for the months of the year by typing January in a cell. Then you can drag the fill handle containing January until you have all the monthly labels you need. You can also easily fill cells that have date sequence by dragging the fill handle on a single cell containing a date. You can fill cells with a number sequence, such as 1, 2, 3, and so on, by dragging the fill handle on a selection of two or more cells that contain the sequence. Now, to create a number sequence using a value in a single cell, you can press and hold the control key as you drag the fill handle of the cell. As you drag the fill handle, Excel automatically extends the existing sequence into the cells. Now, the content of the last filled cell appears in the screen tip. Now to examine all the filled cell uh, or fill series options for the current selection, you can click the fill button in the editing group on the home tab and then click the series to open up the series dialog box. And that is copying formulas with absolute cell references, which is all the information that's on pages Excel 38 and 39. You're ready to move on to the next video, uh, which is going to be our last video in which we're going to be talking about rounding a value with a function.